And I looked around to see if anyone had noticed what just happened. And when I realized that nobody did, I went, ah, and my wife came running with a glove. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And one of those memos pertains to insects. Of course, at this time of year, both Britain and America are absolutely rife with insects, except there's one key difference. America's insects will kill you. Disclaimer, that's very rare. But on the subject of America's insects, there were a select few that I encountered only after moving to America. And for those of you thinking, oh, I hope he includes black widows on this list, Firstly, I encountered those at London Zoo. Secondly, a black widow is a spider, therefore an arachnid, not an insect. That was a special note from Uncle Toby. No, the sorts of insects I'm about to discuss are the kind of little creatures you'll encounter if you move to America, particularly if you follow me to the Midwest. Don't actually follow me, that was, I was being metaphorical. Without further ado, here are five insects that I only encountered after moving to America. Okay, I lied. We do have crickets in the UK. They're just quiet and really boring. Wait, no, that's, that's the sport of cricket. Um, we have crickets in the UK. It's just that they don't make up the soundtrack of summer suburban life, right? And that's because they're super rare. So rare that I don't think I encountered them in the UK. And if I did, I certainly didn't encounter the sound. Here in the summer and especially in the evening, it's a sound you can't avoid. That famous cricket noise that I'm terrible at imitating is made by males stridulating their special wings to attract females. It's sort of like the Gorilla Dye version of slipping into your DMs. Except unlike Kelvin McDaddy 24, they at least have the guts to hold themselves publicly accountable. What I mean by that is everybody in the street can hear them trying out their pickup lines. And in that respect, they're not alone. I must confess, in addition to not encountering cicadas before I moved to the United States, I hadn't even encountered the word. And that could have been potentially problematic, especially if I was put in charge of naming kids. But cicadas are weird. Periodical cicadas don't turn up on an annual basis. But when they do, they show up in huge numbers and this helps their population to survive predators. But it also makes for a surprisingly effective flash mob. This is particularly true of males who also break out into song, but they're not auditioning for Les Mis. They're doing it to hit on females who, tragically, haven't discovered headphones. And this isn't even the freakiest thing about cicadas. Once they emerge from the ground after 17 years, they shed their actual skin. And I'm watching this whole thing. A cicada lands right outside my window and I'm thinking, don't shed your skin. That's weird. Certainly don't do it right there on my window ledge. And this is the truly weird bit. Once they get rid of that skin, they become, well, harder. Not that I've been touching these things. I mean, I've seen Marvel origin stories, right? And this is 2020. I don't want to take the risk. Speaking of things that sound like they belong in science fiction, bring on our next entry. A few months back, you might recall that I did a video on words that I only encountered after moving to the Midwest. One of those words was firefly or lightning bug or glow worm. I first encountered fireflies in the summer of 2009 and I didn't know what I was looking at because we don't have anything like this in Britain outside of Hogwarts. And for those of you not in the know, fireflies are amazing. They light up in the dark and before you get excited and start chasing them around with a circuit board, they do that for a very specific reason. It's to attract the attention of a mate. So don't get too close, three's a crowd, but unlike with crickets and cicadas, this call to nature can come from both males and females. It's sort of like a bioluminescent version of Tinder. And when it comes down to it, they're probably my favorite insect in America. In fact, if I was on Tinder, I'd give a glowing review. I don't want to date a firefly. That's not my point here. Although I am more likely to swipe left slash right however Tinder works on a firefly than I am on this. 
Okay, let me clarify. We do have mosquitoes in the UK. They're just evidently a different type that don't make your face look like you've just been in a fight with Lennox Lewis. Over the last few years of living in the United States, I've arrived at a conclusion. Mosquitoes are wankers. Let me take you back to the summer of 2009. I was a fresh-faced 27-year-old who knew nothing of these crazy American ways. I was just standing around outside in my sandals enjoying some really good barbecue food that somebody else had prepared when all of a sudden I got itchy feet. And you thought that was a metaphor, didn't you? Well, I actually got itchy feet because they'd just been bitten. And I looked down and underneath my plate of wings was an insect with wings. And I looked around to see if anyone had noticed what just happened. And when I realized that nobody did, I went, ah, and my wife came running with a glove. No, no, it's not that kind of problem. I think, I think what happened was I was just bitten by a fly. And note my incredulity because in Britain you don't often get bitten in an irritating way unless you jump into a swarm of midges. This was more pronounced than that and while my wife was busy explaining to me that what had bitten me was a mosquito, it relocated its picnic up to my face. And this wasn't some lonesome mosquito, he invited a friend. Hiya, oh, yeah? is that Sharon? You wanna come over? I saved you some. Now, bear in mind, this was during my first year in the United States, so I couldn't get on Skype to my parents for a week in case they thought I'd been beaten up by a local gang. And as for the mosquitoes themselves, all I can think is they were trained centuries earlier to identify and maim the British. Just imagine being the brown marmorated stink bug. Absolutely nobody likes you. But before 1998, even most Americans wouldn't have been familiar with this most horrendous of insects. It was in that year, having been introduced from Asia, that they were first observed in the United States, specifically Allentown, Pennsylvania. Since then, its population has expanded dramatically across the eastern United States, and that's where I come in. I'm not usually someone who's creeped out by insects, but when I first encountered one of these in my first American house, no less, I nearly myself. In hindsight, that was a slight overreaction. They're not that scary, but they were unlike anything I'd seen before in Britain. Actually, no, I take that back. They look like a woodlouse that's been chiseled. I was more freaked out when I discovered the following two facts about them. Firstly, you're more likely to find them on the surface of fruit than you are the inside of your house, for that is where they dwell, and because of that, they're an agricultural pest. But on top of that, as their name suggests, they have glands that let out a horrible odor. So for once, they're not trying to attract a mate, they're intending to repel. So it's both the opposite of sliding into your DMs and the prime example of it. Stink bugs. They might be brown, they might be green. However delectable they look, don't eat them. That's it for this episode of Lost in the Pond. Let me know in the comments below your favorite insect. Also, let me know of any insects that I should encounter for the first time so that I can do a part two. My name is Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. All of the videos that I do on this channel are made possible by my patrons. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond and support the work that I do, you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Until next time, goodbye.